We're going to take you to a live look right now at Alexander the Great Parquet on the Danforth, and that is where a vigil will be held at sundown tonight, commemorating the one-year anniversary of the mass shootings, which took two young lives and injured more than a dozen others. This parquet has become the focal point of what is meant to be Toronto Strong, and we will be repeating that sentiment over and over today because we are Toronto Strong. Mayor John Tory has helped to steer this city through the troubles of a year ago. He joins us now reflecting on the year that has passed and what lies ahead for Toronto because we do want to look ahead. But thank you for joining us this morning, Mayor. Pleasure. Uh, let's talk about yesterday because you were at the commemoration ceremony, meeting with the families, meeting with friends, meeting with the community. What was that like? Well, I mean, I think it, it, we, we got it just right. And when I say we, I mean, the politicians deliberately stepped back and let the community organize that. And I stayed in close touch with the families to make sure that what we did was suitable for them. And I think what we did was something that was low key. It was comforting. It was warm. Uh, it was short. And I think that's what they wanted. And I talked to them sort of before and after, and they seemed to be happy because it was all about them. And so I think what we did was we continued with healing. I mean, you know, when you lose a child uh, or when you yourself have been injured in a way like that, Danielle Kane, for example. I, I think it's hard for the rest of us to imagine that that's something that's a lifelong healing process. And the community heals itself faster in a certain way because it's a more of a collective mm -hmm. thing. But I think yesterday and hopefully tonight, you know, in that kind of low key Toronto way, you know, contributed to the healing for everybody, which is what we wanted to do. This has been a very difficult year for Toronto. What we saw with the Young Street tragedy just a few months prior, and then what happened on the Danforth. To lead a city in the face of tragedy, what has that been like? Well, it's been it's been trying, but I don't want to suggest it's been trying for me. It's been trying because what you want to try to do is get things right in terms of, of finding out what happened, because that's important to make sure that you know you hopefully can prevent history from repeating itself, but also then to make sure the healing process takes place. And what I've discovered is the latter, the healing part happens more or less by itself if you kind of stay back out of the way and you're, you're kind of a comforting person yourself as the leader of the city, but you also are letting the city deal with its own trauma and, and, and so on and just provide support. And so that's what we did on that. On the first part, I think we've had adequate um, examinations of these things such that we, you know, we know, for example, in the case of the one we're commemorating today that there are some mental health issues that are out there that continue to have to be dealt with and this is something that existed long before and long after the Danforth and that there are some uh, gun violence issues that have to be dealt with and firearms issues and I've talked about those and I try to talk about them in a non-polarizing way it's a difficult issue because it becomes polarizing very quickly but um, I'm just you know I guess I'm just simply for the proposition that we have to be doing something about guns in the city just because more than on the Danforth they're a problem yes I pose this question question to police chief uh, Saunders is Toronto safe and what is your answer to that question? Oh, it's incredibly safe by any measured objective standard. I mean, it's one of the safest cities in the world, and it certainly, I think, is still the safest in North America. However, you know, the first thing you can do that's a big mistake is to be complacent about that and say, oh, well, it's safe here. We don't have any problems. We do. We have problems with firearms. We have problems with gang activity. We have problems, frankly, with uh, disparity between different neighborhoods in the city, which in some cases can lead to this sort of uh, activity. So I think it's uh, probably the biggest challenge that I face in my job that the chief faces in his job, which is to address the community disparity, which you do by investing in kids and families, support the police, and make sure the laws are such that we can keep it safe. But it is still a very safe city with pockets of, of, of uh, disparity. And in fact, in many of the same places where there's disparity and, and, and uh, people who are poor and, and are dropping out of school and whatnot, you also have elevated levels of criminal activity. And we've got to address that. We're trying. Mayor, you touched on mental health, and that is key in that mental health of the suspect that was involved in here, but, but also the mental health of those who were impacted by what happened. Are there enough resources provided to the citizens of Toronto uh, to help with that? Definitely not. Uh, and, you know, the fact is that we hear of these great new investments being made by governments, and I'm, I'm sure, I, I know they mean well, and I know that they're trying to sort of do better. But if you compare the plight of someone who has a mental illness with the plight of someone who has a kidney ailment or a heart ailment or something like that, it's, it's just not, it's not comparable. You know, and, and I think that uh, one of the things we see in a lot of these cases is when you go back and look later, you see a long history of reports going into files and schools having issues and raising issues about people and 
people being taken to the hospital. And, and look, I know that the, there's no magic cure to mental illness, just like there isn't to a lot of physical illnesses. But the bottom line is, are we doing enough? The answer is no. And uh, in, in this city, which is such a wonderful place to live, that around every corner, homelessness, policing, addiction problems, and so on, lies a mental health issue that is being addressed not to a sufficient extent. And so it is a real challenge in front of us. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, you even, even, you even hear, and I find her so inspiring, Danielle Kane, even when she talks, she's got all of her own issues physically with herself, and I'm sure she's been traumatized by this, but she talks about the fact that we have to be mindful of the fact that there are things that lead to this that are not always as simple as, as a bad person. Right. You know, and so that's, that remains in front of us. So still a lot of changes need to be made. Yeah, a lot lots, of work to be done. Lots. Mayor, thank yeah. you so much thank for you your time today. Uh, it is 8.07 right now. We're going to check in with Frankie.